Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to strongly support this uh, uh, bill, uh, but with little tweaks here and there. And Mr. Speaker, I'm surprised that um, Senator Kirerege and Senator Osoti, members of this House who I believe are seasoned and they give serious thought to legislation, are complaining that our elections are too expensive. If you think democracy is expensive, please go and try dictatorship. Please go and try military rule. You will know the difference. And Mr. Speaker, I say this with maximum respect because I know for Kerereke in 2007, when the, the country went bust because of flaws in electoral process, probably he was in uh, kindergarten, so he has no idea how even Mr. Speaker Sir, your own father, who was a senior member of this house, how they fought so hard to, to keep the country together. Mr. Speaker, I therefore want to say that our process that looks expensive, it is because we are ahead of many other countries in the world. They'll play catch up and they will start doing what we are doing today. I therefore want to thank the mem members of NATCO for this uh, particular process that informed this bill. Mr. Speaker, I believe strongly that electoral laws, election laws, should be reviewed regularly as a, process, as, as a practice at the end of every electoral cycle. What is important in this belief of mine is that Obviously, there are lessons that we learn from every election that invite an opportunity for us to make the process better. We should therefore not ever get tired of reviewing our election laws over and over again. Mr. Speaker, it is agreed that an election starts and must end at a polling station. This was not only the intention of the Constitution, but it was also confirmed by the decision of the High Court, which has guided many, many petitions in this country uh, that we have seen, especially the presidential elections. I therefore want to add my voice to this law that is now making it clearer that election will start and end at a polling station. Colleagues, let me tell you about the figure 500. If you are to take account of one up to 500 and you are counting pieces of paper, one, two, three, up to 500, it cannot take an hour. It is within that an hour, an hour, you can sort out the votes. Abdul, senator, got this. His opponent got this. And then be able to count one to 500 and actually be able to get a result in a polling station of why the, what the senator of Wajia got vis-a-vis -vis his opponent. We should defeat the corruption that accompanies the voting process that leads to the delay in a place like Kisumu, the, the distinguished professor had to wait for three days before he could know his fate. What annoys is that, Mr. Speaker, in my own experience, I have got my own tallying center, counting and tallying center. I know the results because I get feedback from my counting agents in every polling station. Then I'm forced, after knowing the results by around midnight, I'm forced to stay three days for what I know to be announced by the returning officer. We should make this uh, the practice, and I'm happy that they have now put in uh, timelines that within two hours the results should be announced. 
Mr. Speaker, the reason why we should insist further is that the people who want to manipulate the electoral process usually count on our agents, counting agents, and our agents at polling station becoming fatigued. Because how will somebody sit in the counting hall, telling hall, for three days, nonstop, and you expect them to be alert enough to guard against uh, rigging? As a speaker, I wanted to speak at length on this uh, issue, but because of the request from the distinguished senator of Nairobi, Senator Mutinda, I want to vacate my contribution earlier so that she can have an opportunity to speak. But I want to request her to allow me to speak so that I am stopped, Mr. Speaker, at exactly 25 minutes past. So could the, 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 the clerks at the table stop me at 25 minutes past so that I allow Mutinda now to do her bit? Honorable yes. Senator, um, I have no problem with you um, spending less time than you're located. Yeah. Um, but um, the procedure in the House is that after you speak, I have to give an opportunity to the other side. Uh, and I have oh, Senator... So, so my, gift, my gift I should give to Professor. I want to appeal to Tabitha to... Somebody. I want to appeal to her to accept that because we are very proud of Professor. Professor, the work you did in court, eh? you, 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 you. <laughs> that was a study in the practice of law. The jibes you are throwing, my two young lawyers in my family, my daughter, uh, the, 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 my daughter Vivian, and my son Sonista, they were very happy with you, uh, the way you conducted yourself in court, and of course, you brought us the right to decide. Congratulations. Mr. Speaker, I want to speak to the problem of nominations. The nominations, as stated earlier by my colleagues, must cease being the decision of political party leaders. Members of political parties must vote to decide on the party list. So that after members of ODM have voted on all the names of the people who want to be nominated senators, then the women who get the highest number of votes are put on the party list in the order of the number of votes they got so that it's not the decision of the political party leader. You can see the misguided contribution for the center of Landy suggesting that party leaders conduct nominations from hotel rooms. I'm surprised that he was not forced to apologize and withdraw. We have distinguished senators here, people like Beatrice Oyoma, people with families, people like Mutinda with families. What message are we sending to their families that they were nominated from rooms? Shame on Senator Gerrige. He is even imputing a further improper motive, Mr. Speaker, on senators who are males, Chemera, who are males. Is he suggesting that they are homosexuals? That their party leaders are homosexuals? It's, it's, it's unbelievable that we can uh, degenerate to that uh, level, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I I've said it before and I want to repeat that people living with disabilities they should themselves vote amongst themselves to decide who amongst them should represent them and not the decision of political party leaders. I also believe that we should continue amending the laws until we ensure that women reps are elected not universally in the county, but they are elected by fellow women because they are only women who know who are the best women that you should represent them as women reps. If they don't want them to be women reps, then we should amend the constitution not to call them women rep. But because the constitution called them women reps, they should be elected by the people they represent, the women, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, having said that, I now want to uh, give way for our good professor to then inform us on his thoughts on this law I support. Thank you, Senator. Senator Tom Ogienda. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I will take a limited time in s contributing to the amendments uh, bill 
Elections Bill Number Two of 2024 that seeks to amend various provisions of the Elections Act. Mr. Speaker, I want to agree with, with the Senator Halwale on the timeless nature of this amendment and on the need to continually amend the Elections Act. Mr. Speaker, two points. Number one, Mr. Speaker, telling at polling stations has been the subject of various election petitions. And the time question that uh, Mr. Senator Lwale has dealt with, signing or filling 